Hi guys, uh, my name is Chris and I'm the Director of Online Learning here at Eastern College Australia and I'd like to uh, share with you, let's see here, I'm going to share with you. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, what online learning looks like at Eastern College. And so it's my privilege to work with an awesome group of people. Um, working at, with people at Eastern, it always gets me pumped about um, how exciting it is to live in God's world and to just enjoy the world around us that God has given us. And so it, Eastern's a great place, uh, lots of people to um, ask questions of. And I just, I'm the director of online learning. I'm a California native and I've been here in Australia for about 10 years. And so I guess that makes me an Aussie American. And Sarah Michael is with us as well. She's listening in and uh, she's the director of undergraduate education studies and she's also a lecturer and she'll be answering uh, questions about just all the different programs that we offer at Eastern and courses and so forth because I'm no expert on that. So without further ado, let's get into it and let's uh, have a look at what online education looks like at Eastern. So first of all, wait a minute, here we go. So this is our roadmap. Um, we're just gonna talk about a student's journey, what it feels like to be a student the first day of university. And then we're gonna talk about how we learn and just some of the beliefs that we have at Eastern about how people learn and how God made us to be learners and lifelong learners. Um, we'll be talking about what makes Eastern different and instructional modalities at Eastern. And that's where we'll get into uh, the spoiler alert that we actually don't traditionally have many totally online classes at Eastern, but post COVID-19, we'll just kind of talk about how that's going and what we're doing right now. And then what an online class looks like basically at Eastern. Now, if you have a question during this presentation, please put it in the question box at the bottom so that, um, or I think maybe it's at, your, at the top or at the bottom. Either way, just put a question in there in the question box, not in chat. And that way um, I can have a look at it while I'm going through this presentation. So Paul says in 1 Corinthians 9, uh, for though I am free from all, I've made myself a servant to all that I might win more of them. And to the Jews, I became as a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law, I became as one under the law, though not being myself under the law, that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, not being outside the law of God, but under the law of Christ, that I may win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, that I might win the weak. I've become all things to all people, that by all means I might save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, that I may share with them in its blessings. So I'm saying this because this is clearly the message of the New Testament that, um, the, um, that the gospel ministry of the Apostle Paul is something that needs to be flexible. And so God makes this clear to us that as Christians who have a teaching ministry to others and we're part of a Christian learning community, then we need to be flexible in how we deliver content and how we engage with students. And so when we're online at Eastern, what we're focusing on is how we can help students learn, essentially. Now, I wanna talk about a student's journey. <clears throat> a lot of people start uh, university, and I think this is an experience that we've all had, where you go into a university classroom and it's like a big gigantic lecturing theater and you see all the tables, it's empty. You show up on time, but it's totally empty. And all the tables are upside down on top of each other. And you look at the very front of the class and there's a stack of papers there. And you're like, that's the only thing here. So you walk all the way down, you look at the stack of papers and it's like, oh, there is the unit guide. And it just says, you know, assessment number one, assessment number two, assessment number three. And it's like, got no information for you. And unfortunately, this is the experience that a lot of people share with me. And of course at Eastern, you're not just a number. And so what I'm getting at here is that this is what we value is we value our students. We value getting to know you. And we're aware that all students need support. And so in the way that we do education in general, whether it's face-to-face -face or online or in what we call a flexi class at Eastern, these classes are aiming at 
growing you as a person, helping you to learn to grow and to engage and to support you. And so just to clarify things that you might need to know. And so that's our job. That's what we consider what we're doing. That's what we think is important about what we're doing. That's what we value. So online students fear abandonment. And that's for that reason, we really value the opportunity to equip students in a sort of a one on one way. And so we do the best we can to engage with our students. Um, and at the same time, like there's a real variance, especially post COVID-19 in terms of how much time an individual lecturer is going to have with an individual student. And, you know, it depends on the class and it depends on the lecturer, but I'm just wanting to articulate this as our heartbeat first to start with that Eastern exists and our identity is to equip people for faith, life and leadership in the world. And I think that comes across really well in our, some of our core units, which I'll talk about later. So how do students learn? So we use uh, phrases like, I learned my lesson, you know, and that's a really common phrase that kind of indicates that learning is something that we intuitively understand as a society, is something that we do experientially. We experience, uh, you know, th things that we didn't want to happen and then that's how we learn. So we learn by doing, uh, we learn by experience, and sometimes we learn by guidance about somebody taking us one step of the way after the next. And that's especially true with really content heavy subjects like the languages and so forth. Um, but the bottom line is that as educators, we know that we can't help you unless we get to know you. And so there's that really central importance of relationships and how we do education. And our goal is to stay committed to that. Um, every step of our evolution as an institution. Now, somebody was saying to Picasso that he ought to make pictures of things the way that they are, objective pictures. And he mumbled he wasn't quite sure what that would be. And so the person who was bullying him produced a photograph of his wife from his wallet and said, there you see, that's a picture of how she really is. And Picasso looked at it and said, well, she's rather small, isn't she? And flat. Um, and that's one of my favorite stories, just to think about different ways of looking at things. And there's the old way of looking at education where there's sort of the, stage, the sage on the stage, the um, person who's delivering content and the stand and deliver person. And that's basically gone. I mean, it's completely on its way out. And really we're coming into a, a time when the older, <clears throat> the more um, almost Old Testament mindset, the Hebrew uh, way of discipling people more closely that's what we try to do more at Eastern. And so education can be thought of in multiple ways. I mean, people can see something on your CV or on your resume and say, hey, this person is educated. Look at all the stuff that they did. But you can be very educated and not learn that much. And so our goal at Eastern is to really support you in your learning process and to help you learning from a different perspective. Now, this is an interesting picture. I found this because I just wanted to illustrate how at Eastern we see uh, learning as a, a diverse thing that takes place. Um, I don't have the chance to sort of field questions and let you guess what this is a picture of, but I'll just tell you that this is a picture of the Bible. A lot of people don't, uh, I mean, don't recognize this right away because obviously all the colors and the stripes, but what it is, is uh, it was a project by a couple of people in Germany, and I think this was about 12, 11, 12 years ago, where they took uh, a Bible and they took all the cross references in it where texts in the Bible refer to other texts elsewhere in the Bible. And they, they listed them and they basically took all those cross references and they put them into a big database. And so all the places where the Bible quotes the Bible, they used uh, you know, a, a, a basically a line to connect them together. And so, um, yeah, so this is a picture of the way that the Bible works diversely, how uh, there's lots of different kinds of literature in the Bible, but it's all holding together as a complete literary work. And in a way, this is a picture of how Christian education is meant to work. It's meant to constantly be referring to all these different things going on, and it's meant to help you grow up within a world 
that helps you see the world in a certain way. And of course, uh, the way that Jesus uh, developed as a man shows that he went through a really interesting and imaginative process of learning. And that's what C.H. Dodd reminds us of in his book on the parables of the kingdom. The parables of Jesus show the stamp of a highly individual mind. And so as a man, as the man who learned on our behalf, everything that needed to be known about the Father through the Old Testament, Jesus, he went through a learning process that we should try to undertake as well as we disciple believers. So on the left, you see a picture of how education used to work. It's sort of a linear picture where you have um, a lecturer and then you have a whole variety of students. And then you have on the right, uh, a very different picture where learning takes place in a very uh, variegated ways. And I just want to uh, hint that at Eastern we recognize this and this is what we're passionate about is helping students to learn and so when I get into some of the questions about online I think it's important for me to point this out because there's probably a good amount of variance between the way our different lecturers teach but philosophically as an institution that's where we're at and that fits with our our DNA that values community and values our relationships. So what makes Eastern different? Uh, Eastern has a high care ethic, and we greatly value you personalizing your learning. So in other words, we recognize that in the way that you learn, we recognize that you have to actually learn the content and that it needs to be personalized and taken up by you so that you can do uh, great things. Um, the second thing is we're determined to do what it takes to give students a quality learning experience. We know that as lecturers, there can be obstacles to that. Um, but, um, you know, it, it, it's gonna depend on the lecturer and how they do that. But there is, in general, as a community, a really high commitment to doing that well. So we seek to create the classroom environment. And in this case, this is an online classroom environment in a way that emphasizes interaction between faculty and students. And then we also seek for you to have a meaningful engagement with the community. So one of the things that I do with my classes, or I'm starting to do this semester, um, I've been doing this at MST for a while, but now I'm starting to, I figured out how to do it at Eastern. And this is creating groups with students where actually students are put into online groups and they're you know, working on projects together. Um, these are all part of the kinds of the skills that people are gonna need in the workplace as we move forward. Um, I'll handle Q&As and I've got a, a couple of Q&As coming up, so um, I'll try to handle those in just a minute next time I transition. But uh, what should students expect? So I wanna talk about um, what students expect on the basis of COVID-19, because one of the things that I've noticed is that um, with, when COVID-19 hit, um, everything changed, of course, and the students, uh, they brought, I mean, basically lecturers went to something that's often called emergency remote teaching. And then at the same time, um, you know, that's different from online education in a traditional sense. So I'm going to describe both of these and then talk about how we fit in the middle of that. Let me just have a look at these questions here. Okay. Uh, okay. So Susan Grodzik of Educause distinguishes remote learning from what she calls well-considered durable online learning. So remote learning, she said, is sort of a quick ad hoc, low fidelity mitigation strategy where you have students that are face to face. And then uh, what happens is, you know, you're meeting regularly and then all of a sudden the pandemic happens. And so you're just in your homes and they're in their homes and you're just Zooming with each other at the same time that you were meeting face to face. And so this isn't traditionally thought of as online education, but it is a, a remote teaching strategy. And so what I wanna do is talk about what these, both of these ways of teaching online mean. So a meal at Downton Abbey is probably what you would call a durable online learning experience. And this is the kind of thing where um, all the different courses are, are thought through and they fit together. And then it's also understood by the you know, the head chef or the whatever the head butler is uh, that 
that manages the meal, you know, all the different courses as they fit together for the palate, it's all thought through. And, you know, there's a consciousness that you're going to have people who, uh, you know, maybe have a food allergy or there's a problem with this. And so there's a need for diversity, for catering, even that metaphor, catering to people with different needs in a learning environment. And this is kind of what online learning is like. Um, it challenges lecturers to have things thought through and all the aspects of the learning experience to be thought through in advance. Now there's another strategy that I don't call a strategy, and this is Bilbo Baggins, where the dwarves invade Bag End, and they just start eating them out of house and home, or um, Hobbit Hole and home. And this picture right here um, is sort of a picture of how the teacher probably feels when things go pandemic, because then the students are like, okay, well, when can I talk to you? And everything's just sort of random, and it's a bit disorganized. And people just, they want this and they want this, and he doesn't have a chance to plan. And so because of this, uh, this is kind of the, the picture of emergency remote teaching. Um, more, not as much for the students, because I'm not saying that students are dwarves, but it's, it challenges students to re-envision themselves, too. It gives them a challenge to take up um, some of the responsibilities of the education process on their own that they're not used to doing in face-to-face -face classes. And so students have to re-envision themselves as different kinds of learners to maximize the use of technology and to think independently and so forth. Let's have a look at this here. Um, okay. So now I want to talk about the different um, forms of uh, instruction because at Eastern we have uh, different ways that classes are delivered. And so this is how it kind of becomes concrete, is that, you know, with our lecturers, because there's such a variety, and they all have these same passions and commitments, that's just basically what's needed to become part of our, our teaching community. Um, but at the same time, when it comes to philosophy or strategy, or sometimes just because of the content and the way it's delivered, it's going to be done in different ways. And so uh, we're all somewhere between Downton Abbey and Bag End. That's what I want to say. Um, we're all post COVID-19 and some classes are totally online and some are more like Bag End. And there, there's everything in between and it really depends on the lecturer and what they understand your needs to be. Um, so if they think that your needs are that, you know, you're a dwarf and you need to be fed this way, or if you're, um, a Grantham, you need to be fed that way. You know, it's not, it's just, that's, it's up to the lecturer about how they want to do things. And so uh, I just want to look at the different terms and what they mean at Eastern. There's face-to-face -face classes, um, and that just means instruction in a physical classroom, which we're not doing right now, but obviously we all hope to be doing soon. And these classes meet at what's called synchronous times, where people are at the same time, they're together, um, and then this is also just uh, something when you have a face-to-face -face class, the LMS, which is the learning management system, that's Moodle at Eastern, that has all the content that you need. Um, so it doesn't mean that instruction is taking place online, but all the support content like the unit guide, and we'll look at that in just a few minutes here. With online classes, they're different. The instruction happens in a virtual environment, and it may happen synchronously at uh, a time that you know, meets regularly every week, or it may not. It, it, it just depends on the lecturer. So I just put either right there. Um, but all the content that you need would be in the Moodle and the LMS. And then we have flexi classes. And we also, um, let's see here, we also have intensives. And these are basically classified in the same way, because the, it's just different in terms of when you show up to class in person. So an intensive would just be like a whole week or a weekend or something like that, where people meet in person for that brief period of time. And then, you know, there's other times when things are just, um, you know, flexi class where you just meet once every weekend or something like that. So those are technically kind of the same. MST calls those blended learning. And I think that we often call that at Eastern that as well. Th those are just two different ways of talking about blended learning. All right, so we're gonna have a look at what an online class looks like. And I think I've gotten through this presentation a bit faster than I 
um, thought I was going to, but I've just, I wanna slow down here and we'll kind of do some questions and we'll take some questions, but I first wanna show you just what an online class looks like. And so this is the class that I'm currently teaching. It's called Introduction to the Bible. And as you can see here, there's a, a unit guide and this just, this is what you click on to get all the information you need about your schedule, about um, how to contact your lecturer, about the objectives of the class, the assessments, that's all going to be on that unit guide page. There's announcements for your lecturer to just send you information about what he or she is planning to do with the class or what's coming up next. And you have assessments here, and of course, there's other forms of support there. Now, if we go to the next page. If I scroll down a little bit, you can kind of see I've got a module for each week. And this is how most of our classes look now, is they're structured according to modules. Inside this module here, I've got information on what you're going to see when you go in. And so you just kind of click on that module, and then I'll show you what that looks like on the inside. So this is the first module after I've opened it up, and it's got the same instructions and then it's got some activities below. So for instance, some video, it's got a lecture here that's an audio lecture with a transcript, and then a forum for you to participate in. Those are the kinds of things that we do with our online platform. Now, this is also a picture of the unit guide. And uh, as you can see here, you've got the unit coordinator, and then there's also the academic in charge, which is the main lecturer that you're interacting with. And the unit guide just basically tells you everything you need to know about a class. So it's got a schedule here, tells you what to do each week, and it also indicates the assessments and all those other great things. Now, finally, I wanna talk a bit about, um, oh yeah, I need to mention. So basically, in, in general, in principle, the opportunities at Eastern are that you get to be encouraged by lecturers who are passionate about their faith in Christ, to understand how learning takes place, and they care about where learning is leading them. So where it's leading you in the world when you go into the world. And we have these core units. We have one called Living in Christ, which is basically focused on uh, your relationship with Jesus Christ. Um, there's one called Literature and Worldview, where you read, um, I teach this one, you read a variety of different kinds of literature, you read some fantasy, you read some existentialist short stories and poetry. You also talk about the implications of literature in general for how we think as Christians and develop a worldview. And so that's the class where you kind of learn different literary styles and things like that. And this is a core class. Um, and, and again, depending on the course that you're involved in, the core units will be different. So these are just the universal ones. Um, and they're not all used in every single course. I should add that as well. There's Intro to Bible, which I just kind of showed you. It's basic uh, Bible study methods so that people take this class, they can learn how to interact with the Bible and what's in it. There's Foundations for Faith, which is um, uh, just, it, it's, it's basic principles of the basics of the Christian faith. There's Faith, Reason, and Justice, and this class has to do with Christianity and social action about how to make a difference in the world. And then there's this um, last class here on integrating your vocation with your faith, because we don't want you to go out into the world and for your faith to just go on this shelf and your vocation and the work you do goes on this shelf. We want people to think in an integrated way. That's very important to us at Eastern. All right, so I'm gonna get into some questions here. Um, I can see we have three so far, um, the first one, uh, Sarah, would you mind answering this for us? I, I think I kind of did. Are Eastern's programs and courses totally online? Would you, would you mind answering that from your perspective? Sure, thanks, um, Chris, and thanks for that uh, introduction to Eastern's online courses. Um, absolutely, so our um, courses are not entirely online, of course, at the moment. Um, they are during this uh, lockdown period. Um, everything is being delivered online. But as um, Chris mentioned, some of the lecturers are using that time to still meet with their students in face-to-face -face, um, video classes. Um, and, and some would continue probably to do that even beyond the COVID time 
to use um, when they do have online classes to still continue with some of those being video synchronous class classes. Um, but no, generally the course amounts to about 50% um, being online. So some units are fully face-to-face. -face. Other units are delivered with about 50% face-to-face and 50% online. Others are different combinations, different percentages of both. And then you've got other units which you might choose as your major specializations, for example, which may be um, entirely online. And sometimes we also offer units one semester they'll be online and one semester they will be face to face and so you get that bit of a choice of um, if you want to use the convenience of an online unit um, you might choose to do it as the online option thanks chris cool thank you sarah um and i'm just gonna i think i'm gonna defer these also to you because i mean i've said from my perspective but i think it would be good for people to hear from your perspective are all the classes the same or did they vary depending on the lecturer subject, et cetera? Okay, so no, they do vary very much. So um, some, some lecturers will have, um, you know, highly interactive um, classes for the majority of the time. Other lecturers may have um, more um, lecture style initially and then um, kind of interaction um, between that. Um, you'll have some classes which are very practical. Um, we have some classes that actually go into schools occasionally during the course of um, the delivery of a unit. So for example, I was taking, taking a class um, last year and about out of the 10 or so classes, I think about four or five of them, we actually went onto a school site and engaged um, with a teacher on site um, related to the subject that we were covering. So um, every, every lecturer would deliver things slightly differently. Um, and that brings a really nice kind of variety to um, your learning experience. And, and also particularly just, um, again, as Chris was saying about catering to different learners, it gives you different ways of engaging with the learning and, and there'll be times when it's more um, in tune with your preferred style of learning. And there'll be other times where it might be a little bit more challenging because it's not um, necessarily in, um, catering directly to your preferred way of, of engaging with content. But that variety will enable you to um, you know, cover your content in, in so many different ways and, and hopefully find it really engaging as a result. Thank you, Chris. Sorry, Chris, you're on mute. Sorry, Chris, you're on mute. Oh. Hi. Okay, I think Chris was probably talking about that third question there anyway, so I'm going to um, answer that for you. Um, can we enroll at any time? Um, you well, kind of, um, not really, because we have um, enrollments open at the beginning of semesters, so or rather towards the end of the previous semester and going into um, the first couple of weeks of the subsequent semester. So the way that you would enroll is, of course, first apply to join the course. Now we have um, a process where you would put in your application, you will then um, be invited to come in for an interview. Uh, you will meet with the course coordinator of the course that you're applying for. And then um, as a, following that, if you're offered a place, you will then be um, guided as to how to access online content and um, enroll in the units that you need for that semester. And you'll also, of course, be given advice on what units are those that you should enroll in for each semester, particularly if you're seeking it, you can just ask your course coordinator and they will give you some advice. So um, enrollments are at the um, towards the end of the preceding semester, um, whether you've already applied and you're on the course or whether you are applying for the first time to join a course. Thank you, Chris. All right. Well, uh, listen, thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, our next um, session, please stick around for our next session, which is going to be on vocational training and internships. Um, so thank you for attending. And we uh, just want to say God bless and uh, hope you get in touch with us and become part of our community. All the best. <laughs>